Hey everybody, Tom Ballator here with the last walkthrough, problem number seven in PSET four. We're almost to the end, and this is a nice little barrier to get over to get the full credit for this PSET. This problem is tricky, I think. There's a lot of issues with the logic, and what I'd like to do here is briefly first talk about the specification, two hints in particular about that, and then I would like to talk about some pseudocode that might get some of you who are stuck unstuck. Okay, let's take a look at the specification, which I know you've already read, but there's a few things in here that I think are important. First of all, inside this hints about the output. Yeah, right here, this function can be written in 15 to 20 lines of code. Really? I don't buy that, actually. It took me 32 lines. I cannot imagine doing this in 15 lines. I just can't. Uh, at least 15 readable lines. And... From the other solutions I've seen in the past, yeah, usually people are between 25 and 35 lines or so. So don't feel if your code is somehow over 30 or 40 lines or something that you're doing something wrong. Absolutely not the case. That's one thing. And another thing is, remember we had problem six here, playing the game. You've already done your code for this. You should remember that. The trouble I had was I took my code from playing a game and I tried to just use it straight out in problem number seven, and then add some things on at the end to make this option of either the user playing or the computer playing. That's really hard balancing act, I think. And I would always be able to get maybe 18 out of 20 points, but there were always some fundamental errors I had. So what I did after sleeping, I think one night, is just started fresh with some new pseudocode, making a lot of use of things I had done in problem number six, but in the end, just coming up with absolutely new logic. And let's talk about some of that logic right now, actually. If we look at spider, let's think about what we should be doing in this problem. First of all, from problem number six, you know the general structure of a game, I think. At least the one that I laid out in a walkthrough, with the caveat that you can do these things in many different ways. I like to do these in terms of a while true loop in the sense that I know something is going to be happening an arbitrary number of times depending on user input. And I obviously use a while loop for that, but why do I have a true condition there? That's because when I use a true condition, it means that I must, well, obviously I'm setting up an infinite loop. I must break out of that loop at certain times. If I don't break out of the loop, it's not going to work. I like to structure things that way. That's just my preference. So that's the way I'm going to present this. So what do we want to do here? In the first case, if you look at the specification, it says ask the user for input N or R or E. So depending on if they want to play a new game or if they want to repeat the game or if they want to exit the game, you've got to do certain things. So what I would recommend first, though, is that you go through the exceptional cases, the, the cases, let's say, for the first one where they push E. That's a really simple one. So, well, first of all, you have to get user input. And there's ways of doing that that you did in problem number six. So that's fine. So you want to get their input. And if input is, let's say, E, then you just want to get out of there, right? You want to break out of the game. That's really easy. Just break. Now, there's some other things that can happen that aren't good, that won't let the player play the game right away. Another example of that is, for example, if input is R, but if they haven't played already. So what do you do there? They say, I want to repeat the game, but they haven't actually played. You did this in problem six. You want to start them again at the top of the loop. So in that case, what I would suggest is actually using a continue statement. Continue statement's really nice because what it does right here is it doesn't break out of the loop. It goes to the beginning of the loop again. And then it does that. It asks for input again. So this break and continue um, sort of set of options in while loops are really my go-to for these sorts of problems. What else can happen here? They might put in some garbage sort of answer that doesn't really make sense. Right? They might type in Scrabble. So if the input is not valid, and what does that mean here? If you've gotten to this point, if it was E, they would have broken out. So you don't have to test for E. If it's R, you've already tested for that. So basically, if the input is not N, 
then you want to do something. You want to say, hey, I didn't understand your input. So if it's not valid, I would say if it is not n at this point, then, you know, again, um, warn the user, let them know that that's a problem, and then prompt them again. So you might want to continue. Again, this concept of going back to the top of the loop where you're getting the input. So to me, that's a really nice crisp structure for getting the input and making sure there's no problems. So if you've made it through all these statements, and if you haven't gotten caught on any of them, that means the input was something valid that you can be using. So what do you want to do then? The next thing is that you have to enter a new game in which you're going to be asking, is the user playing or is the computer playing? Okay. So if you want to enter a game and if you want to get input from the user, how do you do that? Well, we've had some pretty good examples for that, haven't we? We got one right here. You can use that same structure, I think, and just start a new sort of sub game within the larger game. Okay, so get user input, but this time the input is about, uh, oh, I got to tab that over, sorry. Um, this time the input is about, do they want to have the computer play or do they want the user to play? And again, when doing this, I really like to test first if the input's valid or not. So if they've given you something um, that's not a C or if it's not a U, that means you got to ask them again. And how do you do something like that? Well, if the input is not valid, you want to warn the user. So if it's not um, C or U, you want to warn the user and then you want to ask them again and make sure that they type in a U or a C or maybe a control C if they get so frustrated, right? Okay, so again, this continue statement, it won't take you back to the top of this loop. That'll just take you back to right here or right to the beginning of right here in the code. Okay, and let's say you pass that. Let's say you've gotten past that and you've gotten some good input. What do you want to do? Let's think about some more pseudocode. We're almost done. I would say that if um, you've got one choice, you know, either the C or the U, you want to do something. And if you got another choice, otherwise, do something else. And those are, I think, the basic steps that will get you through one possible implementation of this code. There's many different ways of doing this, of course. This is the way I like to see it, and there's still a lot that you have to do, but this should be a little skeleton, a little framework for you to work on. Okay. Enjoy this. I'll see you in problem set five. Bye-bye.